In today's video, we're gonna be remaking this sound in both Serum and Vital. So Afterlife just put out their new compilation, Unity Part 3, and one of the tracks is Cassian Landa. The song is incredible, he's an incredible producer. I wanted to remake this lead though in both Serum and Vital. I've included the presets in the description below. Free presets, oh yeah! But stick around, I suggest watching how the sound is made because you will learn a thing or two as we reconstruct this lead from scratch. So the first thing I always focus on when trying to remake a sound is what is the wave shape and are there any envelope characteristics that I can notice? Right off the bat with this one, it did sound like some sort of saw wave. I also noticed there was an LFO being used on the sound, which is giving it that, 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 that skipping kind of gated effect. <laughs> so those are the first two things I come into this knowing I need to address. Now, as you can see, we're using both oscillators A and B, and I've just gone in and loaded up the Juno wave shape. Now, is that the correct one? I have no idea, but it sounds pretty close. It sounds pretty good. Now, we'll start by just looking at oscillator A. And if you notice, it doesn't get much more basic than this. It's a simple saw wave here, one voice of unison. Now, I've added a second oscillator over here with two voices and a little bit of detune, but you'll notice this one's significantly quieter. So if we just listen to oscillator B, it's adding a bit of the width, it's adding some of that detune, but it is significantly quieter than the first one. So together, you'll also notice I've detuned the two oscillators from one another by lowering this fine tune to minus 24. I also do have the noise oscillator and I'm using the J60. So that takes care of the source section with our oscillators. Let's jump to the modifier, which is going to be our filter control. I have a 24 dB per octave slope on this one. And the cutoff is set to 91 Hertz. You could see it's at like a 10 o'clock position if we think of it as a clock. And now with this filter, I have all three oscillators running through it. So I have A, B, and the noise. And as far as the envelope that's controlling it, we're gonna to get to that in a second, but you can see I do have envelope two modulating this filter cutoff. As we jump down to the controllers, which are our envelopes and LFOs, these are really now what takes this sound to the next level, which really gives it its shape. All right, envelope one is our amp envelope. And for this, you could see I have still a relatively quick attack, 14 milliseconds, uh, decay of 1.58 seconds, sustain is at minus 15 dBs, and I have increased the release a little bit to about 600 milliseconds. However, we still have envelope two also controlling the filter cutoff. So this is modulating the filter to open every time the note is triggered based on this ADSR now. Basically, it's just adding a little bit more shape and pluck to the sound. So with envelope two, you can see once again, pretty quick attack, uh, decay 727, sustain is at 64%, really crank up the release so it smooths out the, the back end of this. The amount is going to be cranked up all the way because we want the filter to open all the way. Now what you're really hearing that's shaping this sound that gives it its signature characteristic is back to what I said in the beginning, hearing that that LFO is really shaping the output, that stuttering effect. So once I heard that, I immediately knew, all right, there's going to be some sort of LFO controlling maybe the filter cutoff, maybe the amp envelopes. And as you can see, I have this routed to several different things. The overall amp, which I'll show you in a second, but I do have it on oscillator A volume, oscillator B volume, as well as the noise oscillator volume. I also have it modulating the cutoff a little bit at the same time. So you'll see one, two, three, and four are all being modulated by this LFO. And the speed, I've turned off BPM, and you could see that I could speed this up, I could slow this down, so if I wanna use this for my own song in the future, I can make this custom to my song. Right, you could speed it up even faster. Pretty cool effect. Now if I hop to this matrix tab at the top, so you'll see I even have this routed LFO one to the overall amp, which is literally the volume leaving the synth. It's just going to further exaggerate this effect. All right, let's hop to the effects tab. And if I turn all of these off, you hear it's still pretty close. 
compared to them all on. So what I'm doing here is first off, a little bit of hyper dimension. This is also adding a bit more of that detuned kind of sound. I'm utilizing some of these extra voices of unison. Also adding a little bit of the dimension, slight bit of stereo with, because I did notice the original sound wasn't dead mono. All right, let's jump down to the distortion next. I do have it set to tape saturation mode, giving a little bit of drive, a little bit of the mix. Pick your poison here. I don't think this makes or breaks the sound specifically. As far as the EQ goes, I'm just taking a little bit out here at 800, some of the mids, and then I am just boosting the upper third, upper half, whatever you want to call it. Keep in mind that could also just be done outside of the synth in an EQ. You could always post-process this thing. I'm just trying to do as much as I can in the synth for you. Next, I have set up a little bit of OTT in the multiband. Keep in mind, this is not just set and forget. I didn't just drop this on the basic preset and turn it up. Doesn't really work well that way. So uh, this is something that was adjusted, but this will just help flatten things out a little bit more. Finally, just a high pass filter to scoop out some of the low end so it's not so heavy. This could be done in an EQ outside the synth, but again, I'm gonna have it turned on in here. So in this case, I sent my sound to a return channel that has Valhalla Vintage Reverb on here. You could see my processing chain down low. And if we listen to it dry versus wet, There's a nice difference there. Extra little things I've done on this return channel if you wanna just take it and put it in your back pocket for future use. I do have a saturator on here to kind of color the reverb and then I'm side chaining it back to the original lead. So that the reverb is sort of ducking when the lead performs. If you like these types of videos, these remakes, breaking down other songs, you could look above right now. I'm gonna pop up a card where you can go to our playlist. We have plenty of other remakes, a bunch of presets you can go download in there as well. So be sure to check it out. All right, now I've also included the vital preset, which we'll quickly go through. There's gonna be a lot of similarities, but there is one major talking point we need to go over right now. So let's just stop, get it out the way. You need to like this video. For real though, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm reach more people and hopefully people that are looking to improve their skill set, make these dope sounds. So do us a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe if you're not, and let me show you how I made this patch. I'm gonna move a little bit quicker through this one because it's going to be the same shit we just did in Serum. And don't forget, you can also download this patch in the description below. Let me quickly play you the vital preset so you can hear it. Now it's the same thing, two oscillators. If you notice oscillator A is going to be our one voice saw wave, just using basic shapes as you could see. The second oscillator is going to be the one that has two voices of unison with slight detune here. I'm at 20%. I've also once again detuned the entire oscillator using its fine tune control by 24 cents, just like we did in Serum. If we drop to the bottom in the sampler oscillator, I have use the white noise patch. Don't use white noise in the main oscillators. It's not going to sound like white noise. It's actually gonna sound tonal. So if you ever load that up and you say, why doesn't this sound like white noise? Keep in mind, you could just load it in the sampler and it's gonna sound like your classic white noise. Dropping down to our modifier, which is the filter control, you'll see once again, 24 dB per octave. Filter cutoff is brought down, not using any resonance, 11%, very, very little. All right, let's jump to the top where the envelopes are. And once again, you'll notice these shapes are pretty similar. The, the numbers aren't going to be the same as Serum. They don't necessarily align, but the shape is. That's what we're going for. We're just trying to use our ear to shape it the same. I will show you these values here so that you can write them down if you'd like to get a good starting point, but we're still aiming for that pluckier kind of shape. So envelope one is our amp envelope. Envelope two is gonna be the one that is controlling the filter cutoff. And you'll notice it's the same really tight shape, short decay. Uh, medium to higher sustain, but the release is cranked all the way up again so we can have that nice smooth shape. Now I've dragged that all the way down to filter one, and you're gonna see that the amount is set to 91, and that's gonna, again, give our filter that opening. Now at the same time though, you also notice I have LFO one modulating the filter once again. I also have LFO one modulating the volume and level of my oscillators, just like we did with Serum. As I move my cursor through here, you can record these numbers or you could download the preset below, but it's pretty much the same thing. And if we hop to the effects tab, you'll notice they don't have the dimension expander in Vital like Serum does. So with the chorus effect, I'm able to get something very similar. I am adding a bit of voices and this is creating some of that detuned kind of chorus effect. Same concept with distortion, choose a mode. Distortion always sounds really nice. It's gonna add some color to your signal. On the EQ, boosting some of the highs, 
rolling off the extreme highs. This one sounded a little bit noisier and a little more, I don't know, like higher and brighter than the Serum one. So I actually had a boost, but then tame with that filter right above, as you see here. As far as the multiband compressor goes, again, this is slightly different than Serum. It's not just drop, use, you know, use the, the basic preset. We have to manipulate and move some knobs around. So as I've done that, tiny bit on the mix knob, literally 18% doing very little. Finally, filter cleaning up the bottom end. And once again, in the matrix, I'm having LFO one control the overall output volume as well to give it that same kind of stuttering effect here. If I play the two back to back. They're pretty close, slightly different, but I think the bigger thing here is this is a sound now that hopefully you'll be able to control and manipulate and use to your advantage, using your own songs for your purposes. And I'm gonna be honest, you should never just use a preset in your own productions and leave the values as is. They're never gonna work for you. It's on you to be able to change them. So hopefully this shows you how to manipulate the sound a little bit more, affect its shape. If you found this useful, hit the thumbs up. Also go grab the presets below. Don't forget to check out some of the other remakes that we've done. There's some really cool patches that sound exactly like the original. So until the next video, keep making music and I'll see you soon.